Tune Up Thursday. My name is Willie Wright. Thank you so much for tuning in. Got a good one for you to jumpstart your day, to bring joy to your morning. This is our morning Thursday devotion and uh, got a good one for you. Uh, you, re you probably heard uh, on the news uh, the unfortunate death of Nipsey Hussle, a Grammy uh, nominated uh, rapper who uh, of course died Sunday, unfortunately. Uh, our sympathy and prayers goes out to the family and it goes out to even uh, the person who committed the crime. But one of the things that was quite interesting to me um, was the funeral service, the funeral service, especially the speech that uh, Nipsey Hussle's mother gave. Um, she was all dressed in white. And uh, what she did, uh, she performed an African ritual and theology during the ceremony. She was dressed in all white, which was considered a spiritual a wardrobe and she began her speech by calling on the ancestors of her late son quite interesting and while she was doing that she poured out a water libation that means a water offering where she poured water into a plant and uh, she told reporters afterwards that she receives her strength from african um spiritual science and theology and i thought that was quite interesting Got a good one for you to jumpstart your day to bring joy to your morning. We're looking at a Bible text that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. This is what it says, everybody. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiful, or the King James Version says, miserable. What does the Bible have to say about life after death? That's an incredible question. And that's what um, intrigued me about um, this funeral and the, um, the, uh, the push or this outward expression of African spirituality. But what does the Bible say about uh, life after death? You know, there are 12 classic religions in the world. I'm just gonna name a few of them. You have the Baha'i, you have Buddhism, you have Christianity, Judaism, you got Hinduism, and of course you got Islam. And um, all of them, all of these religions have some type of sacred text or holy book, if you uh, would say, that shapes their uh, belief system. You have the uh, Buddhism that has the Tripit, the Tripitaka, Tripitaka, uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, it's a tricky word there. You have the uh, Hinduism that has the Saruti, the Saruti, that's their um, sacred text. You have the Baha'i that have the Bab and the Bulala. Uh, these are sacred texts, uh, this, a sacred text of the Baha'i. Islam, of course, has the Quran. And you, of course, uh, Judaism has the Torah and the Talmud. Um, Christianity has the Bible. Let me just say a little bit about the Bible. The Bible was written uh, by a, about 40 different uh, writers who claimed to be inspired by God. They both spoke and they wrote. And over it was, uh, it was written, the Bible was written over a period of 1500 years. Um, so every major religion, every classic religion has a sacred text. Um, there's also, um, most all religions offer some type of life after death. Um, I'm just going to read some things here. Uh, Islam offers some life after death. They say at death, there is a continuation of life in the spirit without the body. Um, and this continuation, uh, whether it be good or bad or uh, heaven or hell, would determine how you live in this life. So there's really not a death. It's just when you die, there's a continuation of, of life. And how you live determines, uh, how you live now determines whether your life hereafter will be a hell or will be a heaven. That is Islam. Now, Hinduism, at death, there is a seamless move into another life. There is no heaven or no hell. In fact, you are reborn into an animal, a human, or some divinity. That is Buddhism. It's called reincarnation, everybody. Uh, now, Buddha, I mean, that's Hinduism. Sorry about that. Buddhism uh, believes in the cycle of death and rebirth called samsara, samsara uh, through karma and eventually you go through this uh, enlightenment and you, hopefully you'll get out of this cycle of life. 
that is Buddhism. Christianity and Judaism are very similar. Um, all will wake from their sleep of death, um, either in the, in the first resurrection or the second resurrection. Uh, both will receive a reward for the life that they have lived. I'm going to read you a Bible text uh, that points that out in John chapter 5, 28 and verse 29. That's John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. This is what it says. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in their graves shall hear his voice. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So that's the teaching of life after death um, with Christianity and, of course, Judaism. Now, um, there's some uniqueness about Christianity that is unique about unique from any other religion. And that is uh, life after death is accessed by faith and not human effort. All of re other religions, um, these classical religions, um, is different. I'm going to read some texts in regards to Christianity's uniqueness in the life after death and how it's accessed by faith and not good works or good things that you do. In John chapter 3, verse 15, this is what it says, that whosoever believes, there it is, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me give you another one. It's Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. So Christianity, you have access to eternal life uh, through faith and not by some good works that you do or some good activity that you have done uh, in this life. So in Christianity, um, the Bible lets us know that we are judged by our works, but have access to eternal life through faith. Uh, I'm going to read uh, another scripture to you um, that kind of shares how that we're going to be judged. In Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12, this is what it says. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Well, that's kind of confusing. So if we have access to eternal life through faith and yet we're judged by our works or whether we do good or bad, how do we reconcile the two? Well, when you read the Bible, you'll discover that works is simply a manifestation of your faith and your trust in God, your belief system, your relationship with God. And so your how you live really determines whether you have true faith. Um, in James chapter 2, verse 17 to 24, that gives the um, answer uh, to that um, question in reconciling. I'm going to read this to you. It says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And so um, by our works is a manifestation or demonstration of our faith. We really have faith when it shows in our lives. That's what the Bible is talking about. Um, so the Bible makes very bold claims of a literal resurrection that is coming of life that is unique from all of the religions, all of the classic religions that we have today. What the Bible teaches about um, the resurrection is this. It says in John chapter 11, verse 11, it, says, it lets us know that death is like a sleep and there is no bodily functions. Death is like a sleep. And you'll uh, read about that uh, in John chapter 11, verses 11 through 14. Uh, the body returns to the dust um, and the breath of life returns to God who gave it. Um, also, uh, the Bible talks about uh, the soul. The soul, according to the Bible, comprises of um, the body and the breath, the body and the breath. And at death, there is no soul. Now, there is no such thing in the Bible of the immortality of the soul. And you'll find many nominal uh, Christian Christians uh, today believe in this uh, never dying soul. But that's not taught in the Bible at all. The soul comprises of both the body plus the breath um, mingled together. Once the breath of life relieves, um, there is no soul. All right, that's what the Bible teaches 
and eternal life um, comes at the first resurrection. Um, that's what the Bible uh, teaches and not at death. And a lot of uh, Christians um, who read the Bible and I don't know where they're getting it from um, have been taught that uh, eternal life comes at death for the Christian. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches eternal life is given at the first resurrection. You check it out uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 24. Um, also, let me give you some more information. Those who lived out their faith in Christ will be resurrected with a new body. That's what the Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 53. I'm going to read just a little bit of it. It says, behold, I tell you a mystery or a secret. We shall not all sleep. He's talking about death. Uh, in, in, in the Bible, the Bible compares death to a sleep. Uh, the sleep of death. But we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when you look at the Bible, when it talks about the life after death, it's letting us know that those who trust in God, they will be resurrected at the um at the coming of Christ um, in the first resurrection, and they will receive a new body, an incorruptible body, and a body that is um, immortal. And so um, that's what the Bible teaches uh, in regards to uh, death and the resurrection and the afterlife. That's unique, unique for, to all other religions. Now, one another thing that is unique about Christianity is its founder, um, died, but came back to life. He is not in the grave. Um, and you read testimonies and so forth and regard by the disciples that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. And uh, this is powerful, just powerful and very unique to um, other religions. Um, let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. This is what it says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep or have died. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. So Christ was the founder of Christianity, rose from the grave. And that is very unique um, and powerful um, in the Christian religion, different from all other religions. So when you read the Bible, the Bible lets us know that Christ's resurrection is a precursor for those who trust in him, that they too, if they die in Christ, in their trust in him, they too will rise again or be resurrected in the first resurrection, as the Bible says. And that's what Easter is all about. Easter is not about um, Easter eggs and Easter hunts and Easter baskets and um, all the bunny rabbits and so forth. It's not about that. Easter is about the resurrection of Christ, and it's about a precursor that those who trust in him, trust in the Lord, they too, if they should fall asleep, that is die, they will experience an afterlife at the first resurrection, and they will live for eternity with God and all of the other beings that he has created. This is Tune Up Thursday. I'm so glad that you tuned in uh, today. I hope this was a, a, a way to jumpstart your day, to bring joy uh, to your morning. And I like what the Bible teaches about um, life after death. I don't know about the other ones, but I know that the Bible makes sense to me. And uh, if you read it uh, correctly, listen, uh, we're going to shift gears. Perhaps you have a prayer request, send them on the uh, comment line. And we're going to take prayer requests now. I believe in the power of prayer. I, again, I've seen God do some incredible, amazing, awesome things that you can but only conclude that there is a God in heaven. So send your prayer requests on the comment line. We'll take them uh, at this time. And one of the things I want you to pray for me is you'll notice that our quality of our uh, video is 100% better. Well, I'm trying to do some things uh, to make uh, our videos uh, more professional. 
All right, I'm finally getting those uh, prayer requests uh, coming now. All right, we're gonna pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much for this privilege to call on your name. Remember Lolita, uh, Scott, in a very special way, I'm asking that you would cover her family uh, with your love, your protection, and your prosperity in their lives. Keep them, Lord. We live in a dangerous, crazy world uh, today. Remember Barbara Hayes. Uh, we thank you for her being on uh, this uh, live stream. We ask you, Lord, also that you will remember her. Uh, you know the challenges and you didn't know the joys, that, uh, the things that bring joy to her life. I'm asking that you would remember her. Remember the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church family in a very special way. My wife is on uh, today asking that you would remember uh, Sylvia Wright in a very special way, uh, that you would uh, just cover her as she travels and cover our family as we travel. We're asking for just traveling mercies. Uh, um, and those who uh, in our family that are going on vacation, that you would uh, give them traveling mercies also. Um, asking you, Lord, that you remember uh, the Tyrell family in a very special way. We're calling out Justin's name uh, again in prayer. And of course, the family. Uh, Lord, we're asking that you would touch him with your healing hand. Um, and my wife again, all right. Um, Lord, I'm asking that you would remember the Cuffey family, um, my mother-in-law and father-in-law asking you, Lord, that you would um, just, just be with them, uh, help them, Lord. We thank you for how you've been sustaining them. Bless my uh, daughters and my grandchildren. I place them all in your care and in your hand. Uh, Lord, I'm just asking that you would remember uh, the Crump Thompson family and remember uh, Jaden, uh, who is going to be, has two tests today. Lord, we're just asking that you would bring uh, that which he which he has studied back to their remembrance. Um, whoever it is that has to take the test, we're asking that you would do just that. We're so grateful for your love and your kindness. Thank you for uh, letting us know the truth about death after life, uh, life after death. That is, sorry about that, uh, Lord. You understand what I meant. Uh, life after death. Help, thank you for helping us to understand it and help us to put our trust and confidence in you um, so that if we should fall asleep as the Bible teaches uh, in death, that you would wake us up, that you would resurrect us into life uh, evermore. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. This is Tune Up Thursday. My name is Willie Wright. Don't forget to hit that a like button, uh, share this video on your timeline, and check out the YouTube channel, You Tune Up Devotionals. That's You Tune Up Devotionals, and you'll find other devotionals there. And you pray for me also. Continue to keep me in prayer. In fact, I'm going to offer a prayer before I uh, close uh, because I'm trying to uh, improve our videos uh, so that you will have a pleasant uh, view, uh, viewing. Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you would help me um, in uh, producing a good video so that our viewers uh, would be blessed um, as they tune in every Thursday. Thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank God for what he is doing through uh, Tune Up Thursday. Continue to tune in. Again, share it on your timeline. Hit the like button. Thank you so much for the like buttons. And um, check out the YouTube channel, You Tune Up Devotionals, to jumpstart your day, to bring joy to your morning. We'll see you all next time. Same place, same time.